Get on board with crypto. Sheesh. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Last up with ribs. Yes. Yes, if you are guessing right now, yes. I am wearing barbecue sauce on my face. I am wearing it. It's all over my face. If you don't see it, you must be blind or something to what is happening in the world. Because barbecue sauce is the key to enlightenment. Anyways, guys, I am your host, Ribbity Frickin' Dibs, over here on the channel Blast Off with Ribs. Here we are. We're getting into it today. Check out redwave.com. It is a semi-new, I mean, it's a little over a year old, so I guess it's pretty new, uh, social media platform, redwave.com, R-E-D-W-A-I-F.com. Check it out, guys, today. I'm on here. I am 100% verified. Shoo -shoo. Uh And also, follow me on Twitter. I'm there. I'm always there. Doing something or another. But anyways, guys, let's get in to what's happened this week. It's been quite a week in uh, crypto. Celsius filed. Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, they did fire or let go their old law firm, uh, Akin Gump, Strauss, Hoare, and uh, Feld LLP for the ever famous Kirkland and Ellis LLP. They also helped out and assisted Voyager Digital with their bankruptcy filing last week. So, last week's news. They also filed bankruptcy. So if you used either Celsius or Voyager, which I have an account with Celsius, so uh, I'm amongst the many of customers that they had who have their funds locked away, and will we see them? You know, for our sake, I hope we do. I don't have a life-changing amount in there, but I have some, and that's more than enough to say what the F. WTF. WTF, Celsius, way to manage your stuff correctly. Way to do things right. <laughs> Same thing with you, Voyager. If you just done things right and a little bit more conservative, you would have uh, probably not been in this predicament at all. Uh, but that's what happens when you are new and don't know what you are doing. Not to say that they don't know what they're doing because, you know, I'm still getting... I don't know if anybody else is, but... If you had joined earlier than, I believe, what is it, April of this year or something, then you, your account is still earning on any crypto that you kept in there and did not move it. Uh, so I'm still earning on, a, on all my crypto that was in there, which is kind of silly because I don't know if I'll ever see it ever again. Um, so, yeah. I mean, if I get my initial back, I'll be happy about that. Um, but I did remove some a bit earlier than that this year due to moving things around and like trying new things and doing some research and development on some things for the channel. But I am glad that uh, I did get some of that out. But either way, all that stuff's gone too. So um, not completely gone. Just it's earning me something somewhere else. <laughs> So, yes, Celsius is one of the larger companies who did file Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which really is an organization's, they're reorganizing their strategy for their customers and for their business and how it actually works. So, yes, we might not see any of our funds. For the time being, I am con considering it a loss. Um, it just kind of makes me feel better. I do feel for everyone out there who did put all their life savings, either into Voyager or Celsius. Both of these companies were, were at the Bitcoin conference this year. I did not go to either of their booths, honestly, um, because they were streaming the whole time that they were there. So I didn't really get to talk to anyone important, which was unfortunate. But um, yeah, that's it. Um, but Celsius closed off the last of its decentralized finance debts owed to Compound. Ave and Maker and reducing its initial debt of 820 million to just one point, like literally a penny over the course of a, of a month. So, is this entirely true? Let's get into 
it a little more here. So still unknown, however, will be the fate of the depositors. So any of us who deposited any money into the company, their assets locked up into the lending platform, neither the company nor the CEO, Alex Mashinsky, has made any public comments about whether depositors will receive any percentage of their funds back. On Tuesday, Vermont's Department of Financial Regulation issued a warning against the troubled crypto lending firm reminding consumers that the firm is not licensed to offer its services in the state. Uh, so yeah, some people use VPNs to get around this. So if you do live in a state, technically, that does not offer their services, like New York is another one of them, uh, they do not offer services in New York, just like Voyager doesn't offer, offer, offer New York, New Jersey, and a bunch of other states. So Vermont must be one of those states where they did not allow people to use their platform. Also, lending. Uh, I find in crypto that that's just a, a no-go. I don't like to be in... I mean, I have student loan debt like crazy. Um, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. So... That's that's pretty much good. That's sort of good debt, but not not really. Um, I mean, debt is debt, I guess. But uh, I don't like borrowing. So if I don't have to, I mean, the whole point is to, to, to make more money. So if you hold on to it long enough, you will make enough money. I and mean, just look at the charts. Since its inception, it's literally just blast it off like this channel, baby. Woo! So let's get deeper, deeper into this. The DFR also stated to believe the company was deeply insolvent and does, doesn't possess assets and liquidity to fulfill its obligations towards the consumer, the customers and the consumers and accuse them of mismanaging customer funds by allocating them towards risk investments. This is honestly probably true. Um, I mean, they wouldn't be filing bankruptcy if they didn't mismanage their company. <laughs> so, and that that encompasses everything, not just mismanaging customer funds. So, Vermont became the sixth state in America to open an investigation into Celsius's crypto and interest rate accounts, uh, joining likes of Alabama, Kentucky, New Jersey, Texas, and Washington. Rumors of Celsius insolvency began circulating last month after the crypto lender was forced to halt withdrawals due to the extreme market conditions on June 13th. So, more information is coming out constantly on them. Uh, so, we'll really see what happens with this. So, this is another one. Celsius filed bankruptcy. So, that's the one we just looked at. Um, did I miss something in the article? Ah, here we go. It's a different article. That's why. Okay. Okay. Uh, the bankrupt CFI crypto lending is about $1.2 in deficit with a majority of its liabilities being customer deposits. Some believe that they may not be required to give back. Technically, they are not required by law to give them back, but it is a policy of theirs that they are going to attempt to do that. And, I mean, this if Celsius... If Celsius is looking to move forward and keep their operations going and to not collapse completely, bankruptcy does not mean they're going to just dissolve and disappear. It means they want to fix something that they did wrong, but if they go about it completely wrong and they don't give its consumers its money, you know, its investments back, that's the problem, okay? You know, if, if I don't get 100% Literally 100% of what's in my account today and moving forward because it's earning me more every single day that it's locked and I can't touch it, the more I'm not going to invest in them. Like if, if, if they told me from like today on, I'll like from today to, you know, whenever I put my money in that I would get that money back and not any of the extra stuff, I'm, I'm a hundred percent okay with that. But pretty much until they halted withdrawals. So like a couple weeks ago. I'll redact what I said. So up until they closed everything. So I would like to get 100% of my account back from that day. Um, and if I get the majority, I'm going to pull everything off. 
But if I get if I get less than fifty percent, I'm pulling everything off, and I'm never using Celsius ever again. That's my personal opinion on that. Honestly, I don't care at this point uh, if they decide not to give them back because I'm just never going to use their services again. I'm not putting more money on their platform. I will not be. So they halted with OpenSea, but Coinbase and. Um, I think FTX as well have uh, consolidated their workforce, so they've they've laid off tons of people, which is very unfortunate. You know, for anybody who who did get kicked, um, you're looking at the lower level people and potentially some upper level people in there. Twenty uh, percent is a massive amount of, uh, for any company to just lay off, but times are rough, and you know, the money supply is <laughs> inflation is kicking everyone in the in, in you know. And the booty! It's kicking everyone in the booty. Yep. So, the marketplace, OpenSea, announced mass layoffs on Thursday, so a couple days ago, uh, joining other crypto companies and reducing the headcount. So, like I said, Coinbase and I believe FTX are two other ones. But here's what uh, Devin Finzer, uh, dfinzer.eth on Twitter, had posted. Um, Today was a hard day for OpenSea as they are letting go 20% of our team. So I'm gonna just zoom in, if I can, on this picture and read it aloud for you guys. So, at Channel Hi All, we made an incredibly sad, difficult decision to reduce the size of our team by 20, approximately 20%. And today we are saying goodbye to many of our friends and team members across OpenSea. Each of the people leaving has played a critical role in OpenSea's journey. They've supported our users, championed our mission, and worked intensely to build the foundations of the NFT space. They are talented and committed, and they will be missed, and we are planned to treat them with great care. Those leaving us will be providing generous severance package, healthcare coverage into 2023, and accelerated equity vesting for those who haven't hit their cliff. We'll also be helping them job placement and opening and opening our personal networks to support them however we can. Finally, thanks to our compassion and support, we are able to notify each person one-on-one -on -one in person. That's really awesome, honestly. We've brought through, we, we've been through winter before and we built this company with the cyc cyclicals of crypto in mind. <laughs> Apparently, I can't read, guys, so bear with me here. <laughs> we've also built a very strong balance sheet through the money we've raised and the product market fit we've proven. Nevertheless, the reality is that we have entered an unprecedented combination of crypto winter and broad economic instability. So I'm not going to keep reading the whole thing for you guys. You guys can go check out Devin um, on uh, Devin Finzer, uh, D Finzer on Twitter and you can read this post um, you know I believe that this is probably one of the better things that's come off of laying people off um, but yeah at least they're being extremely generous giving a severance package giving all these people health care benefits because uh, you know if they go on unemployment if if OpenSea even put into the unemployment uh, insurance then none of those people would get anything. So the fact that they're getting a severance and they're getting health care provided to them until 2023 is very good. And the fact that they're opening up their networks to help these people find new jobs is even more amazing. That they're, at least, they care. They care. It's just, they can't keep paying everybody, you know? And that's that's really the sad part. You know, they're, the, the reduction in pay is probably the severance. They're getting something. They're not getting everything, but they're getting something. So even though this is really bad, it really shows that they cared about their employees and they had to just make an unfortunate decision. So um, this is a good transition. We had bad, we had bad and good, and now we have some good news um, from Andorra. Andorra greenlights Bitcoin and blockchain with digital assets act. This could be great. It is a tiny, tiny little country in between France and Spain, or province, I guess you might want to call it. Um, 
A small light of progress shines from Andorra, a tiny European country nestled between France and Spain. The country's government, the General Council of Andorra, recently approved Digital Assets Act at regu regulatory framework for digital currencies and the blockchain technology. The act is to split into two parts. The first regards the creation of digital money or programmable digital sovereign money, which can be exchanged in a closed system. In effect, this would allow Andorran state to create its own token. Interesting. They will be creating their own token to help support their people, really. Uh, the people of Andorra. The second half of the act refers to the digital assets as financial instruments and intends to create an environment in which blockchain and distributed ledger technologies can be regulated. Huge. For Paul, who withheld his surname, CEO of local Bitcoin business, 21 million. That sounds awfully familiar. <laughs> the new law could attract new business, he told Cointelegraph. The outcome they're trying to achieve is to actually attract new businesses to locate in the country by offering some legal clarification, making it easier and more transparent they see this as a way to attract talents and entrepreneurs to the new economy. This is huge. Andorra sees the actual potential for their tiny country to bring in money in different forms, digital assets and their own digital currency, along with just all crypto in general. So. By bringing that into the country, that allows more money to flow into Europe and to that tiny country in general. So, if anything, this is, this is all great news. Not just good news, it's fantastic news, guys. So, this is really, really good. In a blog post, Paul highlighted that Andorra could adopt a Bitcoin standard, mining Bitcoin with renewable energies, very key, taking on Bitcoin as a reserve asset and welcoming Bitcoin-centric companies from all around the world. <laughs> National newspaper, don't know what that says other than Andorra, reported that a Digital Assets Act is a step towards making cryptocurrencies a day-to-day -day reality. For me and you and everyone who's been watching this channel and supporting the channel, thank you guys very much. This is the kind of news we need to hear more frequently, especially in times uh, of bear markets, because this is the time to accumulate more Bitcoin, more altcoins, uh, in, and hopefully you guys are putting them into cold storage wallets and not just holding them on centralized exchanges like Celsius and Voyager. Um, that also goes for Coinbase and FTX and Gemini and all those other locations. You know, I get um, I get why you do, but there are other options for DeFi and they are decentralized. <laughs> uh, since DeFi is decentralized finance. So yes, uh, you can stake on other exchanges like Uniswap, C Corona, Krona Swap, which is on the uh, crypto.com or crypto.org blockchain. Um, you can also use pancake swap um, and tons of other ones there's tons of other ones I'm just drawing a blank at the moment so uh, this is huge so in an interview in May Andorran Minister of Economy and Enterprise Jordi Gallardo uh, mentioned that blockchain was one of the top areas of investment in the tiny country big news However, it is not clear if the minister referred to Bitcoin, the world's foremost blockchain, or research into distributed ledger technologies that underpin blockchains. So, okay, so Jocelyn Tonlier, co-founder of Stack and Sat, <laughs> told Coindelegraph that there is confusion regarding crypto, blockchain, non-fungible tokens, and Bitcoin. Stack and Sat all hosts a major European Bitcoin conference, Surf and Bitcoin, in Baritz, France, uh, just outside Andorra, where the group's headquarters are also located. Paul, 
who we who is a regular attendee of the Surf and Bitcoin, confirms in that in Andorra the sentiment and confusion remains similar. The regular the regulator doesn't make a differentiation between crypto and blockchain and sorry, crypto and Bitcoin. They haven't been orange pilled yet to take the orange pill. Is Bitcoin parlance when for when a novice to Bitcoin begins to understand the principles of the seminal cryptocurrency? And this 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 just keeps giving us great news. So Tom Lear, I'm probably butchering these names, guys, so just bear with me. My reading already kind of sucks, so my saying names worse. Uh, emphasized that awareness of digital currencies and technologies is on the rise. Mm. And that there's risks of scam and losses without the right of educational tools and framework in place, which is true. They're on the rise. Be careful. Do not ever, 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 ever give anyone your private keys, ever. Or your phrases to help when you set up your wallet. Never give them to anybody. If anybody ever asks you, never give it away. Report them to somebody. If it's on Discord, report them to servers. Report, you know, block them. Get rid of them. Block them. If you're on Facebook, Twitter, Red Wave, uh, Crypto Atlas. If you're on any social media platforms that are based through through cryptocurrencies, or at least you're chatting about crypto, Reddit even, report them. Report those accounts that are trying to scam people to help deter from other people getting scammed by that, by that specific account, even though they have probably thousands of accounts made. But they are on the rise. According to a recent report by KPMG, there are more French people exposed to crypto than the stock market. Good. <laughs> this is great news. France is known to be a hotbed of shit cleanery. Well, be careful, guys. Be careful. I know one pretty big, uh, not actually pretty big, a new token that launched pretty recently, Jigsaw, totally tanked. Um, I know some people personally that did that and lost a little bit of money, but you got to be careful. That's why I don't do pre-launches. That's why I don't do launches because they just go shoop. They blast off and they tank really hard all of a sudden, you know, and it's rug pulls after rug pulls. And this is why we need regulation because this token should have never made it. Our, you know, auditing companies are only at the moment auditing the code. If the code is good, they are okay. That is such shit. <laughs> such shit that these auditors are allowing shit coins to happen and they're putting their name, they're putting their, like Certic, that's the only one that kind of comes to mind. Um, they put their stamp on a whole lot of different things. Their code is good, but what they're building is not. There's nothing there. There's, there's, there's nothing there. Like some of these crypto tokens that are saying, oh, we're gonna have a game. Well, where's your game? Where's your game? Where's your utility? Where is it? If you don't have it, don't buy into it. That's a lesson not worth learning. <laughs> Especially if you put your whole life savings into something. But anyways, back in Andorra, Tonlier explained that the country is best placed to run these with technologies such as Bitcoin. Andorra is one of the few European countries outside the jurisdiction of the European Parliament. Indeed, in many ways, it can be comparable to Switzerland on a smaller scale. Andorra is very attractive for entrepreneurs thanks to its low tax, but Switzerland has a great head start in promoting the development of activities around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. This could be change in the coming years thanks to the text of laws which frames Bitcoin and blockchain activities. So this is a great article, guys. I am so glad I was able to share this with you. The Europe... Europe is going to be quite a leader in digital assets with Andorra adopting some, hopefully creating their own personal regulation on these things and allowing crypto businesses to flock there, just like Switzerland, just like Dubai, uh, just like some uh, states here in the US. 
like Texas is super crypto. <laughs> I mean, Miami Beach in Miami is super crypto friendly. So Florida, of course, is another country or sorry, state rather that is just great for crypto. Great for crypto, great for the environment, and great for everything, guys. And that's it. What a great blast off with ribs episode, guys. Check me out. Smash up that like button. Hit the subscribe button. The bell button and all so you can get all my dang videos when they come out. Because this stuff is hot, baby. Keep blasting off, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Get on board with crypto. Sheesh.